Hi, everyone. I'm Mia Zamora from Kane University in New Jersey, and I'm here um, with my partner. That's you, Hi. Maha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maha Belli from the American University in Cairo here in Egypt. And we have Hoda as well, who is Maha's daughter, and she's um, just hanging out with us. Um, we wanted to share with you another um, kind of community building activity. Um, which has been used in a few places. Um, the genius behind this is Alan Levine. Um, the activity itself is often referred to as a daily create. And in another course um, that Alan and I have co-taught together for several years, we refer to this activity as daily digital alchemy, because there's a little bit of magic in creating community through creative activities. So um, this activity is basically something that rolls out for the community every day but it isn't really thought of as an assignment. And I think that like culture around um, the prompt is an important thing um, to get going because students might get anxiety that they have to do something. And this is really more just like fun. So it's completely um, voluntary, but believe it or not, people get really into it. Um, a prompt rolls out each day, which should take about two or three minutes tops. Um, and it just exercises the creative flow of your imagination in unique ways each day. Um, in uh, a former course called DS106, um, and then also in Network Narratives, the course Alan and I taught together, um, this prompt was rolled out in social media. So it was something that could be responded to rather quickly, but then shared within a broader community. And then people would have so much fun with it that they would, would remix um, those materials as well. So they would respond to people's responses with um, new remixes of whatever that prompt was. And so that's where the magic comes in because it kind of, um, it, it sort of um, creates a sense of connection and connectivity that wasn't there previously. So I'd like to share with you guys um, an example of it. And um, uh, let's see, I'm just getting up the screen. Can I ask a question? Are they all digital makes or could they be offline makes? Oh yeah, um, this can be something that's shared online, obviously, but it's also something that um, can be done. I'm having trouble with the share screen. It's not. Um, Do you want to send me a link and I can share this? Sure, that sounds perfect. Um, so what I was going to say is it, it can be something that's done in an in a, you know closed environment too it doesn't have to be in an open environment it can also be done in an analog context depending on the prompt because some prompts um you know require uh like images that come from a photograph etc i mean obviously so, if they're doing it digitally it's helping with their digital literacy if it's stuff could correct be never done yes. before but it's usually i'm assuming accessible that someone would easily learn them on their own mm -hmm. not needing like hand holding yeah so I put the link in the chat, Maha. Yeah, I'll share the screen now. Yeah. So here's an example of one um, daily digital alchemy or one um, daily create. And it just is simply tweet a picture or share a picture of your favorite evil villain of any show or movie and tell why you like the villain. And um, you can see that one of the prompt images is just as um, jack-o'-lanterns and, you know, someone can just look around or think about the inspiration that they have from their um, film viewing or reading, etc. And if you scroll down, Maha, you can see further along um, that the, what happens is the examples that people come up with are really interesting. Um, and uh, so one person shared Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes. And, and so it gives you a feeling for people's likes and dislikes, etc. And then people have fun riffing off of it or remixing some other Im um, images that come up. So um, yeah, that's an example. But there are a million um, daily creates. So you can um, easily, if you'd like to, just go into Google and find daily creates. But um, What's really fun about this as well is that students themselves can make up their own daily creates. Um, 
Yeah, this, this idea is a quick one. It's not meant to be any longer than taking two minutes, but it's the kind of thing that gets a conversation started and gets create, um, your creative juices flowing. And so Mia, do you, um, so, so first of all, I can imagine how someone could use these things within an LMS if they didn't want to use social media. Yeah. Uh, are you sort of recommending that people um, use these things um, like as they are, just use the existing daily creates? Or are you asking people to create their own? Or well, I think that um, you can be inspired by previous ones just so you get a sense of the rhythm and the ones that um, are especially um, popular. But then I think what's really great is when the community themselves get so much into this, um, you know, imaginative uh, sort of daily habit um, with each other that they make their own. Um, and uh, so you can see in what Alan Levine has created on the daily recreate, uh, daily create um, leader or um, dashboard that you can click and see which ones were the most popular. You can click to see who's a leader in terms of responding to them, which is a very fun experience because there are people who just get really into it and they have a competitive spirit. So they want to um, sort of prove that they're, and you can see here, Maha, that Kevin is at the top of the leaderboard, dog tracks. No surprises um, there. Yeah, he's done 217 cre uh, daily creates in, on, the, on Twitter. Um, but yeah, you can just see um, where the inspiration comes from, where the community is born, and those different tops, I mean, clicks on the, on the um, dashboard show you that, that sense of community. Oh, I love this. Um, do you, when you use them in your class, they don't count for anything, right? Yeah, okay, so the class that I, um, that we use this in. Um, these daily creates were just renamed, but it's the same exact protocol and they were named daily Dig digital alchemy. And that's because the course was on digital storytelling and the idea that there could be transformation in terms of storytelling and online experience, community building experiences. That's the kind of thematic of the course along with digital literacies, etc. cetera. So, um, we use them as not like voluntary kinds of almost like building habit um, experiences. They weren't graded, they weren't, but I think what happened that there, there was a bit of contagious, it, there was a contagious quality in them. And it really was a kind of thread in a cultural sense, like the community's culture became one of um, creative connectivity because of these daily creates. Um, and there would be times when it went quiet, especially when there was some big project that was a heavy lift for the students. So people would do less of them. And there were times when they became really um, important. Um, but they tend to um, have students get to know each other in different kinds of ways. I used this um, when I taught a very large class in Norway when I was there on sabbatical. The class was more than 100 students and they had the daily creates along with a lot of other things going on. And I noticed in that large, um, you know, kind of scaled up context um, for instruction that the daily creates were kind of like the creative glue that got certain stu students talking to each other and even getting to know each other in ways that they wouldn't have if, if um, you know, if, if it wasn't such a large, oh, if, if we didn't have these opportunities in such a large class. I'm feeling now like I have a missed opportunity because what I do in my class is that I give students an option to create things from the DS-106 assignment bank, but mm -hmm. it's one of the options along their digital literacies pathway, among other options that involve uh, reading and doing uh, self-paced modules and things like that. But what ends up happening is that because students have a lot of choice, different people end up choosing different things. So this is nicer right. if you want to go and pick up something specific or that relates to your learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. Like if you're really fan fiction, for example, is something that makes sense. Or if you want, you want them to learn to make videos or audio or to do visual stuff, you just click on one of these and there's a list of, I think they're also daily creates, right? Mm -hmm. Or similar to daily creates, like little activities that they can do. And they'll get an yeah. idea of what it is and you can go in and see more. And there's also this, um, I've just seen this rating now. I don't think I noticed it before, but you can see the more popular ones are probably at the top. I'm guessing. 
Yeah, this is actually a duplication of the Make Bank that mm -hmm. was created in the CL MOOC community. Um, and basically, in these visual assignments, there's also a possibility in at least the Make Bank version of it to be able to contribute to the assignments, um, not just do the assignment and make the assignment, but also make a new assignment, you know. So just like the daily create, there's the invitation to create the daily create as well as do the daily create. <laughs> and that's yeah. a kind of fun environment, I think, for students. Yeah, so I think, you know, depending on what people want to do, there's the thing of doing it daily where everyone's doing the same thing and that's a kind of community building thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the option of giving people choices and they could still look at each other's, I think. But it's quite, it's a different kind of dynamic than if they're all doing the same thing. Um, One thing I just remembered is that in the network narratives class, we, Alan and I started off with a baseline, not, I guess we used language that was um, shy of an assignment, but we said that they should um, sort of reach for or aspire to doing at least one a week just so that they could keep their creative juices flowing. And um, we also made it clear we weren't grading them, um, but that it was a part of the spirit of the class. So it was sort of presented like an invitation, but with mm. a sense of where the zone of feasible participation, you know. Mm. Um, but what we also realized is that sort of took off on its own and people surpassed that one a week. There mm -hmm. were times people had a flourish even in the same day of doing more than one because the prompt comes out each day but you can go back to previous ones or find ones in the archive that that you like you know so and the other thing is that since there are so many there in the archives they didn't have to do the one of the day if they oh so they could know, go so, and do an old one right so you could just click 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 until you found one you felt inspired by like take a picture okay. of your shadow and you know, you know, make a title for it, you know. Every so is there, is fun. there a quick way, like what's the easiest way for people to stay informed with the latest? Uh, is there, um, does it, like you subscribe to a mailing list or like if we wanted to use the ones that already exist? Well, um, I think the best way to access these is on the daily, just go into Google and type in DS106 daily create. And then you'll find the very dashboard that was um, previously shown in this small video. Um, and when you're in that space, you can click forward, you can click backwards and just literally scroll through hundreds of prompts and you can adapt those and in any context you'd like. They're all open and meant for the open, um, you know, open web community. Um, also, um, in certain courses, like when I was um, teaching network narratives every spring with Alan, we add to them. So in that context, there is a kind of um, contribution that ends up um, increasing the archive on some level. So, um, and then there's also the possibility of just reaching out to myself or to Alan Levine about um, trying to set this up, this um, dashboard up in your own context. But that's kind of a more elaborate undertaking. So I think um, the archive that lives on the open web is perfectly fine for mm -hmm. um, getting some of these. Uh, I think the archive as it is is useful for people to just pick and choose from if they yeah, want it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Or you can just subscribe by email and you'll get them in your inbox. Yes. Yeah. And if you're on Twitter, obviously, you can also follow that. And yes. What you want. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you, Mia. I'm going to stop recording.